Thomas and the Evil Diesel. Percy wasn't feeling well. His joints ached and he couldn't breathe properly. The Fat Controller came with an inspector who examined Percy and made notes in a small book. When they had finished, the Fat Controller looked serious. You'll have to go to the works, Percy, he said. They'll make you better, but it will be a long job. Who will look after my trucks, said Percy. Toby can't do everything on his own. He certainly can't, agreed the Fat Controller. I shall borrow another engine. The only engine the other railway could spare was a diesel shunter. Duck was at the works when he heard an oily purring noise. He recognised the new arrival at once. It's diesel, he thought, and scuttled behind the shed. What's he come back for, he said crossly. The Fat Controller sent him away in disgrace. The Fat Controller was cross too, but he needed another engine and Diesel was the only one available. When Diesel reached the junction, Thomas was waiting with Annie and Clarabelle. Hello, said Thomas suspiciously. You've come to help Toby, I suppose. Well, no tricks, mind. Diesel looked pained. Tricks? What, me? He asked smoothly. I'm just delighted to be of assistance to you really useful engines again. Good, replied Thomas shortly. I'll believe that when I see it. Diesel pulled some trucks carefully to Fafakwa, where Toby met him. Oh, he said, it's you, is it? Well, do your shunting, please, and then take these stone trucks to the harbour. Thomas and Toby made it clear to Diesel that they would stand no nonsense. Diesel listened, purring quietly. Yes, Thomas, he said smoothly. I understand, Thomas. Of course, Thomas. The trucks knew that the Fat Controller had once sent Diesel away for troublemaking. Let's have some fun, they sniggered. They teased Diesel and tried to annoy him, slipping their brakes on, accidentally on purpose. One morning, they went too far. He is evil Diesel, they whispered as he came into the yard. Oily creature. Yes, Thomas, they mimicked. Of course, Thomas. Anything you say, Thomas. Diesel could stand no more. Grrr! He roared furiously. I'll teach you. He gave the line of trucks a sharp push, shooting them fast into a siding. The oldest truck, who was also the rudest, was at the front. Too late, he saw what would happen. Ugh! He screeched. Help! With a loud crash, he hit the buffers. For a moment, the oldest and rudest truck was squeezed between the buffers and the other trucks. Then both he and the buffers collapsed, and the broken pieces were pushed into the road. Diesel growled fiercely as he cleared up the mess. Come on, you. Any more nonsense and I'll squash you all flat, just like your friend. The Fat Controller was furious. You will go back to the other railway as soon as I can arrange it, he thundered. When the Fat Controller had finished with him, Diesel was glad he was going home. A day or two later, Daisy was running downhill when she felt something warm and wet splashing her wheels. At the next station, she felt hot and her joints were stiff. You've lost your oil, said her driver. 
Bertie will have to take your passengers. Then Tobus arrived with Annie and Clarabelle full of people on their way home from market. Tobus started confidently up the hill, but his wheels began to slip on Daisy's oil and he slivered to a stop. Then, help, help, he whistled, I'm slipping back! Near the bottom of the hill were special points to divert runaway trucks off the line. Tobus could not stop his heavy train from pulling him downhill towards these points. Clarabelle's back wheels were directed off the line. They sank firmly into the mud, and Tobus stopped. That's torn it, said the guard. He helped the passengers back to the station. Diesel was waiting at the next station, pulling his last train before going home in disgrace. He sniggered slyly when he heard about Tobus. Serves him right, he said. Then Diesel remembered that while Tobus was blocking the single line, he couldn't get past. The trucks tittered as he pushed them crossly into a siding. Bother, thought Diesel. I shall have to help or I can't go home. He set off to the rescue. At the oily place, he stopped before creeping carefully forward until he could be coupled to Tobus. Meanwhile, workmen had put sleepers under Clarabelle to make a slope up to the line. Then they cleaned the oil off the rails and put dry sand on them. At last, everything was ready. Diesel dug his wheels into the sand and pulled, but he was careful not to pull too hard in case a coupling broke. With sanded rails, Thomas could help too. The engines moved forward a little way and stopped. Then, a bit more, until inch by inch, Clarabelle came safely back onto the line. Clarabelle was unhurt, so they went back for the passengers. Then, using plenty of sand, both engines pulled the train up the hill. Thank you, Diesel, said Clarabelle. You were splendid. Diesel began to feel sorry that he was going home. Clarabelle asked the fat controller to forgive him, and now everyone hopes Diesel will come again. Diesel hopes so too.